I know Kuk Fu. Show me. Deja Vu. It's your returning champion. Elgin Tensity, aka Wolfgang Trapadeus Brotsart. So Haymaker is an autonomous gym that's starting up now in Chicago. The aim is to establish more networks of uh, self-defense. Look at this thug. He forgot his sunglasses, so he stole that hat from a grandma in the Tai Chi class next to them. I know this is a new program, but I don't see this asshat gaining much support. If I wanted to see a flower print wearing leader of a band of weirdos discuss the bad and bougie, I'd rewatch this Migos interview. Somehow that program's takeoff makes more sense than this one's. We're trying to develop self defense skills in a political climate that's increasingly violent. Why the fuck is Squints from the Sandlot holding his fist like that? Throwing up the Black Panther gesture to look tough doesn't change the fact that he has the figure of a pussy. Especially towards marginalized peoples, people who are not in power, the poor, the oppressed. The people whose cars you set on fire. And so we're really invested in cultivating uh, the capacities for our bodies to uh, just be stronger. Because at the end of the day, it's uh, stronger people harder to kill. Ballistics disagrees, bro. Besides, these fuckheads who lack the discipline to hold jobs or accept election results probably lack the discipline to do simpler things, like get stronger than the children in the fucking leukemia ward. A lot of people think like when you learn how to fight, it's all about being aggressive and like learning how to like, you know. How to like, you know, body weight squat to depth. Zero! Go start fights with people, that's not what we're about at all. Yeah, I'm sure that Starbucks window there started it. You were just defending yourself. We believe that we need to start developing these skills, especially as the violence against us. Not only do these snowflakes have shit stamina, strength, and technique, but they can't even assume a decent fighting stance. What attack is that clean-shaven Ned Flanders looking ass motherfucker waiting to throw? The show re -yukin? We want this to be an open-facing project. Everybody's welcome except police and people that are affiliated with uh, strong right-wing groups. How inclusionary. Though I doubt cops and right-wing groups will want to hang out with the dipshits who are going to pelt them with rocks. Also, strong bicycle crunches. Bicycle locks must be tomorrow's lesson. I bet 837 that their only experience in a gym was walking into Planet Fitness, getting offended by the men's and women's restrooms, and storming out with a handful of Tootsie Rolls. Anti-fascist groups in the U.S. Uh, tend to kind of stay underground, and so we want to make uh, this kind of politics of anti-racism and anti-fascism much more public and much more accessible to the mainstream. And so yeah, we, we're a broad, open, public-facing, popular self-defense project. You're so fucking popular, you only hit 12% of your funding goal. I guess that's what happens when most of the people with money to spare are the same ones you blocked from getting to work. We're trying to uh, use Haymaker as a space to organize with other groups in order to advance the broader cause, I guess, of uh, self-defense. I know you're not supposed to underestimate your enemy, but if CrossFit has taught us one thing, it's that rebellious twinks who think they're special inevitably destroy themselves. Drake and Andre the Giant looking ass motherfucker. It was all a dream. Growing up, my brothers and I always talked about playing in the NBA one day. Now your father, LeVar, does all the talking, lying through his wooden teeth. Why not the norm? Because normal's boring. Yes, a normal life is boring. And if you keep letting your dad manage you, your superstardom's close to post-mortem. A movement allowing us to be entrepreneurs, not just endorsers. So monotone. That's what Big Baller Brand stands for. Big Baller Brand? Whoever came up with that name must not wear big boy britches because that sounds like shit a child would say. You gotta dream big because it's all a mindset. Downs isn't a mindset. With that being said, I'm excited to give you guys an exclusive look at my first ever signature shoe, the ZO2s by Big Baller Brand. Mojo on the beat. Potato on the brand. He went right past ZO1 and called his first shoe the ZO2, as if we need a reminder that he's getting ahead of himself. I had a bitch with a curb, a little bitch with a curb, get on the curb, it ain't for me to spray. But you really don't deserve some adore roof roof with the claws and commas no pause trap out the mall These textured dog turds with the autistic Bugatti logo on them cost $495 If you want them signed and presented in a lit up glass box, that'll cost you $995 That's right some schmucks will pay $995 for Python textured shoes when for the same price they can get genuine Python shoes These look like Kobe's with the zone 6 logo on the back Still they look better than Steph Curry sneakers but the pricing, branding, and public response are as ugly as the Warriors blowing a 3-1 lead. Everything he want gay. I think gay guys have better taste in shoes. Didn't flinch. Creating a shoe was a lot of fun, especially being able to add my own creative input throughout the process. DeLorean finish. Well, these Air TJ Maxxes definitely take me back in time, 
because they look like something out of the late 90s. All I'd need to complete the ensemble are an academics jersey and a pair of Jinkos. I look forward to working with my fellow athletes, pushing the culture forward, empowering the upcoming generation. The dumbasses who wear these hunks of junk in the upcoming generation won't get robbed over them, so that's empowering, I guess. In the meantime, I'm gonna get after it in the gym. My priority is the training to get ready for the NBA. Thank you guys for all the love. You're welcome for the love, fuckface. Hey, you etched out the Infinite Warfare trailer. This one is for the culture. If you flop in the NBA, you can always become a CrossFitter. In that culture, ugly, overpriced shoes are all the rage. Until they get discontinued like these shit kickers did. Step right up here for the greatest show on earth, the Washed Up Loser Olympics 2017. With so many dimwits in body armor lining up to get roasted, it's like we're watching Game of Thrones. But unfortunately, we're watching the CrossFit Games, and I'm Asian reporter and returning champion Elgin Tensity, a.k.a. Ben Trapiro. And they're off. Underway here in the burpee litter. And they're already injured. Never mind. I didn't know CrossFitters could choose when they rode in gurneys. We should call them injury fluid. We didn't want to burn out any one single athlete. You also didn't want to entertain one single spectator. Otherwise, you wouldn't have EMT double dare as an event. Then again, you must think of rescuing people as a game because it took you seven minutes to rescue this schmuck from drowning. The dickheads in charge of safety must have interpreted washed up loser Olympics literally. Cycle cross. So marks the unholy union of an obscure sport from the 20th century and dog shit programming from the dark ages. Yeah, we're getting on the bike, one and a half miles. It's a straight start, but then you hit these tight turns. That looks and sounds like a CrossFitter spine during a deadlift. Anyway, nobody wants to see cycle cross, especially on this easy mode track they built. You want to see pain and suffering, so here you go. Practice session for a lot of these girls yesterday. Uh, and this also in the time trials that set the field. In CrossFit, wheelie pops you. Several accidents throughout the course, mostly on the logs and the barrier. Remember guys, CrossFit prepares you for the unknown and the unknowable, but not for short stationary obstacles that you can see from a mile away. And the deal with these logs is that they're going too slow. And here I thought gear use in cycling was only an issue behind the scenes, not on the bikes. They're intimidating when you're coming up to them, but you have to hit them. Well, not don't hit them. There you go again with the ambiguous rules. There is one of the most dangerous ones we saw yesterday. It's Chelsea Hughes. Who I didn't know Paul Rubens changed careers and started coaching CrossFitters. Then again, it's a perfect match, because CrossFitters never found success outside of the Pee Wee Leagues, and now they're best known for being jerk-offs. She went from giving blue balls to promoting them. Moving on up. If you're an aging Instagram thought like she is, then your two silicone spheres aren't enough to make people's jaws drop anymore. You need three. Enter Jawsercise. Chomping on this overpriced ball gag, gimp suit sold separately, supposedly tones your jawline, because dipshits still think toning is a thing. So how'd you get this thing all started? Okay, years ago I was a mixed martial artist in Fairbanks, Alaska. I would always chew on a thick piece of nylon. You were chewing on nylon? Build the jaw straight. Despite training this way, he got knocked the fuck out in his last professional fight. That feel when we're getting jaw strengthening advice from Glass Joe. And then the years go by, and I find myself jaw injury after jaw injury, and then the grand finale, getting my jaw wired shut for four months, and then came Jawsercise. And then Quato did Jawsercise. 
Unless you're eating a watermelon whole like a hippo, you don't need that much resistance. A wise man once said, real food, and why am I not surprised he can't train shins or pull-ups? Zero! I mean, it's just amazing what it did. Like, I don't know. I think I look younger, I think I look better. Um... If you have to stand in a pitch black room to look better, then your head needs a paper bag, not a plastic ball. Let's compromise. Wrap your head in a plastic bag. I feel a lot more confident about my physical appearance. <sighs> you look a lot like cannabis, down to the mechanical mandible. That would make size your LL Cool J. And this fitness industry reputation destroying commercial, your 4321. It is indisputable the effects of what this little uh, revolutionary device can It makes you look like a fuckface. This potato is even disseminating the idea that chewing on a ball can regrow hair. Well, the proof is in the pudding head, and we now know why this one wears a hat so much. Unless you happen to have Dudley Do-Right genetics of peace, your jawline won't look very good unless you just lose body fat the old-fashioned way. This company's been getting roasted on its social media pages, so I don't see this sadomasochistic fad dominating. If you currently participate in Jazzercise, CrossFit, or similar disciplines, don't submit. Just remember the safe word. Zero! The New Zealand's first transgender weightlifter won convincingly in her first international competition in Melbourne. Remember when I said that people can identify as whatever gender they want and fool people into believing them? I called it jet identification mind tricks. Well, here it is in action. Walking out onto the international stage for the first time as a woman. From New Zealand, Laurel Hubbard. <laughs> Meet Laurel Hubbard, a 39-year-old weightlifter who transitioned to a woman in his mid-30s and used to compete in men's weightlifting as Gavin. Not only is Laurel competing in women's weightlifting now, but he stands to represent New Zealand at the 2017 Commonwealth Games. This is like the Bend Her episode of Futurama, today. Laurel Hubbard knew all eyes were on her, and her first attempt betrayed some anxiety. What a mellifluous feminine voice. Zero! The fact that he goes by Laurel and looks like Hardy is appropriate because calling that a woman constitutes modern day physical comedy. She's feeling really good, a little bit overwhelmed, but she's happy with her performance. So happy to beat girls at weightlifting. Because he lacked the testicular fortitude to compete against other men, he decided to compete against athletes who lack testicular anything. She is who she is, and it's just... Bullshit? It's the way the politics and what the New Zealand have decided. Politics. Too bad science isn't an election. The International Olympic Committee's guidelines on transgender competitors actually determined that Laurel was a woman. As you can see, a male just needs to declare he's a woman and have low enough levels of testosterone. A bunch of bitches are defending this shit. Laurel has passed all of those tests over the last 12 months. Therefore, she is completely entitled, I believe, completely entitled to, com to compete. The problem is, he transitioned to a female in his mid-30s. So for over 30 years, he's had the benefits of higher levels of testosterone the muscle mass, the bone density, and all the other shit that pretty much determines who wins weightlifting competitions. And anybody who says otherwise is either being, I think, very prejudiced. Informed. Which is the main thing I would imagine, or just jealous of the fact that maybe this woman has come along and she's better than the female competitors. Cool slip, bro. She's better than the female competitors. If you really believed your bullshit, you would have said better than the other female competitors, or just better than the other competitors. She loves all her teammates, all the teammates are really supportive of her. Of her. Even Freely almost cracked under the PTSD. Enough of these buffoons. Here's Trisha Takanawa. While her involvement in this international competition is considered a pioneering moment in sport for the transgender community. Sure. And the development of the Ponzi scheme was a pioneering moment in the financial community. You can tell the other athletes felt cheated. Look at their resting bitch faces. They busted their asses only for this Al Bundy customer looking ass motherfucker to walk all over them. Her rivals full of handshakes and smiles on the podium. They're probably afraid to say anything because they'll be deemed transphobic losers instead of just losers. But that support isn't universal. Yeah, if I was in that category, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like I, I was in an equal situation. Finally, someone with balls. A sport isn't legitimate if it's not fair. Make athletes compete based on what they were born as or just create a transgender category. You can call it the Pat Division. Until then, male athletes will continue to win women's weightlifting, women's MMA, Woman of the Year, and all sorts of shit in the name of gender equality. Once they finally crack down on this bullshit, Laurel can always compete in CrossFit, where the records are much easier to beat, and he won't face any male competitors there either. Zero! Every once in a while we make some good friends. 
So I'd like to dedicate this next one to a good friend of mine, Elgin Moniz, a.k.a. Trappy Davis Jr. Everybody drugs them, but it's sometime. Everybody tries the gear somehow. Something in my lips just blow me. My sometime was now.